Hello, it's John Heaton, and uh, today I'm going to explore the question: When was John? When did John Lennon hit his musical peak? And uh, first of all, thank you for the comments on my last video, Ram versus Imagine Head to Head. I was quite surprised by the um, mosquitoes are here again, by the way. The uh, the responses because they were heavily weighted in favour of Ram, and I was quite. Well, as I say, surprised. I think one, one could make a case for both albums. Uh, so maybe that's changed over the years, or maybe it was just the critics who didn't like Ram, I don't know. But um, also a friend of mine, my old schoolmate Henry Hemming, wrote a fairly provocative comment um, in response to my video saying Lennon was way past his best by the time of Imagine, and the best two tracks on Imagine were Beatles songs, so, quite provocative, Henry, but how are you doing anyway? Um, in response to that, first of all, Another Day and Backseat of My Car had also been started in the, at the end of the, towards the end of the Beatles in the Let It Be, I think, sessions. Um, so it's a bit unfair to say that Lennon was just regurgitating old stuff, although it is true, some of that stuff was written a couple of years before, like Give Me Some Truth. Jealous guy was child of nature. Um, anyway, so back to the original question. And I want to open this up to see what you think, because uh, I don't think there's any definitive answer. When was John Lennon at his musical peak? So if you listen to Cynthia Lennon, she thinks he hit his speaker around about the time of Robert Soul. And from a songwriting point of view, you could make a case for that, because just on Robert Soul alone, there's four Lennon classics in my life, Girl, Norwegian Wood and Nowhere Man and I've probably missed out a couple as well he's on really strong form on that album stronger than Paul although on Revolver Paul would uh, reverse the trick and come up with a you know more than his quota on Revolver but uh, songwriting point of view Robert Soul certainly a peak uh, this was not before any drugs and I'll get into drugs a bit later this was maybe at the time of pot. Wasn't taking anything more than that at this stage in 65. So the other, the second period one could make a case for, and a lot of people, because they think Revolver is the best Beatles album, would make a case for the psychedelic period. And I'm going to combine the psychedelic period for the sake of this discussion to include Tomorrow Never Knows, Rain, and the stuff he did the following year, um, I'm the Walrus, Lucy in the Sky, Day in the Life, Strawberry Fields on any criteria among the greatest songs of his career. So you could easily make a case. It'd be quite good to have a debating society with each of us representing one of these periods because you could definitely make a case for this as the greatest ever Lennon period. I think when Paul McCartney was asked about Walls and Bridges in 74, he said, good album, maybe even a great album, but not as good as I Am The Walrus. Well, it's a bit unfortunate that you have to be compared to such a stupendous track all the time, but anyway victim of his own greatness in, in one sense. And the third period where you could make a case for Lennon being at his peak, and it's probably my, my opinion, is the time of the White Album. Because uh, this material is so strong, uh, from Dear Prudence to Happiness is a Warm Gun, I'm So Tired, and uh, even fun tracks like Everybody's Got Something to Hide, except for Me and My Monkey, Sexy Sadie is also glorious. Cry Baby Cry, Revolution of course, both for, both all three versions. Just really melodic, innovative stuff. And uh, I think that's probably his peak period and whether you want to include Abbey Road, Let It Be period in there, because that period did include tracks like Across the Universe. And that gem come together. In fact, Abbey Road, although everyone says Lennon's contribution is lacking, it's got three cast iron Lennon classics on that album, Come Together, I Want You, She's So Heavy, and Because. So, late Beatles, another contender. The fourth contender for greatest Lennon hitting his peak could be straight after the Beatles split. And I think at the time it was probably felt that John and George had benefited most from the Beatles split in terms of they wanted their artistic freedom, freedom perhaps more than Paul. And so they put out maybe bolder statements initially and uh, certainly at the time it doesn't it didn't seem as if John missed the Beatles at all maybe privately he did but on record he was coming up with sublime songs like God 
and singing the dream is over, which is just a beautiful way to sing about the end of a beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, as he said in 1980, I think those two albums, Plastic Only Ban and Imagine, because he was asked whether he'd done anything after the Beatles as good as the Beatles, and he immediately mentioned those two albums. And I think those are the two which tend to go down as being as good as the Beatles, if not better in some cases. Um, he became his own man, he became his own artist, and then he went into politics for a bit. And we've got some solid albums. Uh, Walls and Bridges in particular is a, is a pretty damn strong album from 74. And then I suppose you could make a case that 1980, when he made his comeback, it was very, some very strong material there, and who knows what he would have gone on to do. And George Harrison, at the time of the anthology, when they were recording, um, you know, those Free as a Bird and all that stuff, he made a rather derogatory remark saying John had lost it towards the end in terms of songwriting, and Paul found this remark presumptuous and was a bit offended by it. Um, so the last thing I want to say is there's three things which probably people think, and uh, no, Henry, this is where you're coming from, three things that may have screwed up John or made him go downhill. One is drugs, two is Yoko, and three is the breakup with Paul. So I'll take those one at a time. Drugs, well, <laughs> I suppose you could say, would the Beatles have made such good music without drugs? Probably some of it, but I don't think they would have been quite as... Uh, daring and original. Uh, who knows? Who knows? It's an impossible question, but it definitely expanded their outlook and made them maybe write more interesting lyrics, explore different musical territory. Um, and, he, you know, he wasn't that self-destructive. He had a couple of periods of being self-destructive, but by the end he cleaned up. And I think drugs were a, maybe a, a good stepping stone for John, and it wasn't the be-all and end-all. Uh, certainly towards the end of his life. So, yes, I mean, it's unfortunate he got into heroin and he wouldn't wish that on anyone, but uh, that was right about the time he was recording uh, White Album Abbey Road, so still great music. Yoko, well, everyone has their opinion on this. I think whether you like her or don't like her, everyone probably acknowledges she was the love of John Lennon's life. Whether you want to say a one-sided relationship, that's a bit of a cheap remark in my opinion I think uh, he needed her and he needed a strong woman uh, to be his partner and that's the end of it and she was and she challenged him mentally etc etc break up the breakup with Paul well certainly at the time of the split it didn't seem as if he was missing Paul but as the 70s wore on it was more and more complimentary about a possible reunion and who knows, something nice would have come out of it. I think they did the right thing not to do it. But uh, I don't think the split with Paul for either of them had a completely derogatory impact on their writing. I think they went on to do really good stuff, both of them, John and Paul and, and George, of course, and Ringo. But uh, I don't think, you know, all things must pass and that was meant to end. So that was my thoughts on whether Lennon, when Lennon hit his peak, or various peaks and like to hear your opinion in the comments below thanks for watching see you next time